For the very last thing in this course, I want to actually try and solve Maxwell's equations. I said at the end of the last video that solving the system of four differential equations in four variables is, in general, extremely difficult. However, I want to choose the easiest possible situation. I want to solve Maxwell's equations in the absolute vacuum of space. <laughs> what do these equations say when literally nothing is present? No magnets, no charged particles, nothing. This is a difficult system of differential equations, but it does have a solution. Therefore, at least mathematically, there can be electric and magnetic fields existing in a vacuum, even without any charge, current, or magnetic dipoles present. The method for solving this differential equation is strange. I'm going to prove or perform what might look like some random operations, but they do eventually lead towards a solution. The general strategy is to work with the third and fourth equations and try and decouple them producing equations uh, for each E and B separately. In the process, the first two equations will be used to remove any divergence term that arrive while working with the third and fourth equations. So, the first operation is to take the last of Maxwell's equations and apply a curl operator to both sides of the equation. On the right side, there is a curl and a time derivative. With reasonable assumptions about the magnetic field B, I can interchange the order of these derivatives. Then I can use Maxwell's third equation to replace the curl of B with the time derivative of E. There's no current here, so the J term doesn't exist. I've managed to get away from equations that involve E and B, and I've produced a differential equation that only involves E. So this is progress. Now I want to adjust this equation into something I can actually solve. There is an identity for doing the cur curl twice, which I haven't covered, but I'm going to use it here anyway. The divergence terms are all zero by Maxwell's first equations. Divergence is created by charged particles, and there are no charged particles here, so the divergence is zero. Therefore, all that is left is Nabla squared, which is the Laplacian of each component of the field. I can replace the double curl with a Laplacian and get rid of the negative on both sides to get this equation. In a very similar way, I could repeat all these steps, but starting with the third equation instead of the fourth, and I would get the very same situation for the magnetic field B. All right, so now I have these two equations to solve instead of all four, and these ones don't overlap. There's only E in the first, and there's only B in the second. However, these are still too difficult to solve. Therefore, I'm going to make a number of assumptions to see if there's a solution that fits my assumptions. I'm going to assume that E and B are perpendicular to each other everywhere. Remember, E and B are vector fields, so the vectors they can output can certainly be perpendicular vectors. I'm also going to assume that E only exists in the first component, and B only in the second component. Lastly, and each of them is only going to depend on the third variable Z and on the time T. All right, that's a whole pile of assumptions, but maybe there is still a solution. There is. Under the assumptions given, both of these are solved. The differential equations simplify. Instead of E on the left, I only have the component E1, since I assume the other components were zero, and the same for B. I only have the component B2, since I assume the others were zero. Therefore, I can write just the one component equations. Then, Nabla squared is all the second partials in X, Y, and Z, but I assumed that E and B only depend on Z, which means that the other second partials are zero, so I can replace the Laplacian with just the second z partials. Doing all of that, I end up with these two equations. These two equations have solutions. I need functions where the second z derivative and the second time derivatives are the same except for these constants. Functions that satisfy this are combinations of sine and cosine. Feel free to check that both these functions actually do satisfy these equations by doing the two second derivatives. So, the result is a set of sine and cosine waves. They depend on z, which means that they propagate in the z direction. E is only in the first component, so it oscillates in the x direction, and b is only in the second component, so it oscillates in the y direction. What's the result here? Even under all these assumptions, I can still solve Maxwell's equations in a vacuum. I conclude that electric and magnetic fields can exist as sine and cosine waves in a vacuum. 
these fields move and they can propagate. Electromagnetic fields can move through a vacuum. All right, one last question. If they move, how quickly do they move? What is the wave speed? How fast do they propagate in a vacuum? Well, here is the E function. Um, and the B function was the same, but just for reference, here is the electric field. The wave speed of this has to be the coefficient of the time variable 1 over the square root of mu naught times epsilon naught. Remember, mu naught and epsilon naught were these two universal constants. These have values 8.86 times 10 to the negative 12 and 4 pi times 10 to the negative 9. Well, so I can calculate this. And if I do that arithmetic, I get 2.997 pi times 10 to the negative 8. And if I went back to the unit of all of these constants, I would find that I do get units of meters per second. So this is indeed a velocity. This is a familiar number. This is c, the speed of light. And light is exactly what this wave is. Light is the propagation of electromagnetic fields through the vacuum. At the time of Maxwell, light was not understood as electromagnetic radiation. Maxwell argued that his system predicted the electromagnetic nature of electromagnetic nature of light, and that was eventually proved correct. And this was one of the major accomplishes of Maxwell's equation. Just by solving them in a vacuum, they produced descriptions of light as an electromagnetic wave. It's a remarkable observation that light is just the propagation of these fields in a vacuum, and that all the mathematical theory can actually predict the speed of light long before such a thing was ever measured. And this is where I want to end. This was a course about extending calculus to multidimensional settings, and the success of Maxwell's equation is the perfect example of why that project was worthwhile. Without, without all the many definitions and ideas in this course, these ideas about electricity, magnetism, and light itself are simply not expressible. This is what all this mathematical formalism accomplishes. It gives a language to write down these conclusions.